The Denver Broncos said goodbye to Russell Wilson Excuse and me. open wide and eat a contract. <laughs> How does that contract taste? Uh, <laughs> mm, man, that is not too good. Eat it. No. And this is where you have a billionaire owner, new owner, but it doesn't matter that you're a billionaire. You still have to abide by, you know, the salary cap rules. And that's where it gets tricky here with what uh, the Denver Broncos have to eat with this salary. And then Russ can now go and maybe sign for the league minimum, veteran minimum, which is around $1.2 million. But let's refresh your memory. The Broncos acquired Russ, a nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback, and that was uh, in March of 2022. The Broncos gave up five draft picks, including two first-rounders and also three players in exchange for Russ and also a fourth-round pick. Denver has won 11 of the 30 games since he started, and now Sean Payton moves on. We're not surprised. We thought this was going to happen. The question is, was when it was going to happen, and where Russ is going to head it, be headed. And this is sort of like declaring bankruptcy. You know, you, you tried something, didn't work, the business didn't work, and now you declare bankruptcy of sorts, and you send Russ packing. Sean Payton didn't want Russell Wilson. Uh, but, you know, I start to look at this organization. You brought in Nathaniel Hackett. You made a trade for Russell Wilson. I mean, that has been devastating when you think about this. And... Uh, now Sean is in. Now Sean Payton's on the clock. Now it starts. It's like tick, 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 tick. Here we go. Okay, Sean, who do you want? And I'm looking at uh, the Denver Post. They have a couple of options here. How about Bo Nix, Oregon? How about Michael Penix Jr. the third from Washington? J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. Every mock draft has J.J. McCarthy going to Denver. How about Gardner Minshew? How about Jameis Winston? How about Justin Fields? These are possibilities that are uh, presented in the Denver Post. They go into detail as to why these players could be an interesting option there. But it looks like, you know, Sean's going to get his guy, a younger guy. He wants to mold him. He wants to see if he can find the next Drew Brees and have that quarterback sort of fall in line with what Sean's philosophy is. But Russ is not the same, hasn't been the same. Uh, he had his motivational coach pass away a couple of years ago. And Seton made the analogy that it's like when Kanye's mother died, Donda. He went, he spiraled. He went, he, hadn't, he hasn't returned from that. But I think Russ has been greatly affected, you know, by his motivational coach, his confidence level. And Sean Payton's probably just, hey, I don't have patience for this. I don't want to put up with this. And Russ can kind of be in the moment and tell you all the things you want to hear, and it doesn't feel real. And maybe Sean just couldn't see himself putting up with that for another couple of years. As for Russ, where do you go? Well, let's say you take $1.2 million. Let's say you take, because he's still going to get paid by Denver. They still are on the hook to pay him. Let's say Pittsburgh. Let's say Atlanta. Raiders. Patriots. What about Washington? Would they be interested in maybe not taking a quarterback there? Maybe trading out of that. See, that's the key with Washington. If they could trade out at number two, what can they get for that? And then maybe you have Russ in there. Or maybe you do both, that you have Russ there for one year overseeing Jaden Daniels or Drake May. But Russ, according to Mike Florio, Florio sent us a note this morning saying, Russ, wherever he goes, is going to want to be guaranteed the starter, at least that first year. All right, go to Atlanta. Uh See, really, the domino, the first domino is Kirk Cousins. If Kirk Cousins stays in Minnesota, now Atlanta knows we either draft a quarterback or we go out and maybe sign Russ or Baker Mayfield. If Kirk Cousins, as Mike Florio has rumored, his family's moving to Atlanta, where his wife is from, Atlanta needs a quarterback, and Kirk Cousins a free agent. Kirk Cousins may be to Atlanta, but Florio had that report earlier this morning. Let's say Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta. Now Minnesota needs a quarterback. Minnesota would be interested in J.J. McCarthy. So the dominoes are going to fall, and it really starts with Kirk Cousins. Now Russ, does Russ you know, wait for something to happen? Does he have to wait for something to happen? Is Pittsburgh really all in on their quarterbacks? If you have three quarterbacks, you don't have one quarterback. 
And Pittsburgh needs one in that division when you look around at the other quarterbacks in their division. The Raiders? Can you see them going to the Raiders? I don't, but then the Raiders do stupid things, so you can't rule that out. Yes, Paulie? I've just been thinking about the Denver angle of this. Three years ago on draft night, they thought they were getting prime Aaron Rodgers. Remember that night? There's a report. He's going to the Broncos. They're going to get their quarterback finally, and then they get Russ. You know, the Broncos were eight and nine last year. They were a game and a half away from making the playoffs. This is not some disastrous franchise. Russell Wilson didn't have like 12 touchdowns and 18 picks. He had 26 touchdowns and eight picks. Did this team need to be blown up, I guess, or at least the quarterback position in their cap room for two years? I don't I don't think Sean Payton liked Russell Wilson. I, there's things I don't, I, I don't know. It's like you not liking. You spend so much time with your quarterback. I just don't think Sean wanted to put up with Russ Brings now. I mean, very corporate. I think he wanted an office or had an office there. It, it just, you know, a coach needs to be able to be a coach. And it probably seemed like or felt like or looked like all appearances that he just didn't like Russ. And I go back to when he's yelling at, at him on the sidelines. Can you think of another marquee, maybe soon to be Hall of Fame quarterback where coaches dressed him down in public like that. And maybe there have been instances, you know, Belichick never did that with Brady because people say, well, you know, there was friction on the sidelines. I don't think that Bill did that. Not Bill didn't, but Tom did that with just about every week that with is his true. offensive coordinators. That is true. He did do that. Yeah. But I, I mean, right there told me everything I needed to know. I, I was like, there is no way he's, he's going to be back. No way. They'll eat that. And they got, I mean, this has been a, devastating couple of years and it's going to get worse before it gets better in Denver. Yeah, Seaton. Russ was making like 1.2 every week or two. Yeah. Now he's going to go for the whole year. Man, that's wild. But he still gets paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He still gets paid and then he'll sign for maybe the veterans minimum which is 1.2 million dollars. <laughs> I mean, this is wild. This is when you think of the worst trades. Now there've been bad ones. You know, Minnesota traded for Herschel Walker, and really that trade is what helped the Dallas Cowboys win Super Bowls. Um, you know, Deshaun Watson's trade, that's not good for Cleveland. Um, this, is a this, is, this could be as bad. Bryce Young, that's a bad deal too. When you, when you consider everything that Carolina gave up to get Bryce Young, and then they probably drafted the wrong quarterback. Like, if you do it and you get the right quarterback, then you go... Okay, it was worth it. Like nobody's saying, boy, what did Kansas City give up to get Patrick Mahomes? It was they got Patrick Mahomes. That's all that matters here. It's when you don't get the guy that you think is the guy, that's when it sets you back. So CJ Stroud, you miss out on him, you give up a couple of first round picks, DJ Moore, you give him up. I mean, that's bad. But this is historically bad what Denver did. Is the same GM there who brought in Nathaniel Hackett and then... I was going to say, it's not bad enough to lose your job, though. <laughs> yeah, but is this George Payton who is the yeah. GM there? Was he the GM who brought in Nathaniel? Like, how do you survive that? Like, uh, let me see your resume. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So, Russ is now looking for a new home. And uh, he'll have a couple of options there. Couple options. Yes, yes, Mark. How many seasons does Sean Payton have? Two. Just two? I would say he's on the clock now. And then let's say you're not a playoff team in two years. Okay. He makes a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, he makes 18 million. I would say two years. That okay. Are we a playoff team? And, and still, you have Kansas City and the Chargers and the Raiders who have better odds at making the playoffs than Denver does. But let's see who Denver gets. But if you're getting a rookie, there's a lot that goes along with that. But this is what Sean loves. Sean is, you know, Sean McVay, Sean Payton, they love to be the puppeteer, you know. Hey, I can have that guy go, you know, uh, Shanahan. Hey, I can have anybody go out there and play quarterback. Just let me in their ear. Yes, Eden. You have to give him the... The timer starts yesterday with Sean Payton, yeah. but you've already thrown away the next two years. Kind of. K 
kind of. But yeah. you're not going to be like, well, you got two years to turn this around, but we're still paying this guy. You know, we're going to spend $85 million over the next, or it's going to cost us $85 million over those two years. So you have to give him two years after those two years. <laughs> I mean, right? Well, if, I, if you're going to make a move like that and just blow up and cause what is now officially the worst trade of all time, you have to at least let that guy say, all right, we're in this for at least these two years and then one more, at least two more after that. Okay. So let me do the math here. That's four years. <laughs> Sean Payton. Okay. I think he, he's got four years. He's got four years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Paulie. Denver does have the option that we talked about. They do have the 12th pick. They could draft a quarterback and be back on the rookie contract. So they're basically paying Russell Wilson and avoiding paying the rookie till his fourth and fifth year when the Russell Wilson hangover cap rooms thing will be gone. So mm -hmm. that's the upside. Or if you're Denver, you say, let's eat this season and see how maybe we'll have a, the fourth pick next year or the third pick next year and not draft a, not, tr not take a guy maybe a couple spots earlier than we should have this year. It just feels like sometimes when it's so obvious, then I don't think it's going to happen. That, that Denver was going to take J.J. McCarthy. But then all of a sudden, I keep hearing more and more, even yesterday after the show, talking to a person who was at the combine. And his job is to analyze quarterbacks. And I said, he goes, I know, I heard, I heard you say that you don't get it. He goes, but he does have a lot of qualities that you're looking for. It's not just, let me see the physical talent. You know, is he a winner? Is he smart? Uh, all the, the intangibles. I said, well, wait, what, what are you saying here? Is he Tom Brady-like, that he's not athletic, but uh, he processes well? And he said, yes, GMs talk themselves into, into that stuff. He's a winner. Okay, he went 27-1. and won. I might have won 25 of those games. Yeah, Paul. Can you imagine Sean Payton being interviewed right after the pick? Why do you guys, uh, what do you like about J.J. McCarthy? Well, it wasn't Russell Wilson. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sorry. We're running air? We're running air? I'm running air. Sorry. Oh, man. If I would have said this in March of 2022 when the Broncos made this deal, hey, by the way, this will be the worst deal in the history of the NFL, you probably would have said, boy, you, Seattle got fleeced, huh? No, 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 Denver got fleeced here. Fleeced Navidad. Yes. Uh, I, I, there was definitely, at the time, being like, why are you giving up this much for a guy who's not allowed to cook? Ooh. Like you're you're giving up all of this for a dude who still has the training wheels on by the coach that knows him very very well. I'd love to. Why know. Why would you give up all of this? I'd love to know what Pete Carroll thinks today. <laughs> uh, by the way, the Atlanta Falcons are now considered the favorites to land Kirk Cousins. Big favorites. That's according to uh, DraftKings school system. Once again, yeah, great school system. Uh, but his wife is from Atlanta, outside of Atlanta. Alpharetta, if memory serves. Oh, lovely me. spot. Yeah, it is. That used to be horse country. Alpharetta. And uh, so that this is just a rumor-ish, according to Florio. It's, he's hearing from people that uh, they could be moving to Atlanta. And uh, therefore, you wouldn't be moving to Atlanta unless you're going to play for the Falcons. Yes, Marvin. Russell Wilson's wife, Sierra, is from Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm. So is it a, mm. my wife's from there? No, my wife's <laughs> really from there. And then Future could see his son more often if they went back to Atlanta. Right? Damn. Damn. <laughs> that's not nice. Damn, that's not nice. <laughs> yeah, Paul. And I think Two Chains is from Georgia. Oh. And Kirk Cousins is One Chains. Oh. Remember? Because he always wore the One Chains. Okay. He could go down there and his nickname could be One Chains. All right. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> 